Good afternoon, everybody. On a Friday here at our Basel, Miami. Welcome. Uh, and uh, today we're going to be talking about Argentina. And we appreciate very much that you took time out of your day to come and uh, be included in this conversation. I'm, I would like to thank our Basel and Claudio uh, for all the work that goes into these series. And I would in particular like to thank the three people on the stage with me who never, uh, two of them don't ever like to speak, so I feel very privileged uh, that, I, that they got on the plane and they, they came to Miami to uh, talk with us a little bit about Argentina. I wanted to just start out by, by saying a little bit about why uh, we're doing a talk on Argentina and uh, what motivated me to, to want to invite them and why I feel privileged that they accepted. I was asked to go and speak in Argentina in 2007 at Arteba, which is the fair in uh, Buenos Aires, and last year, 20 years old. And um, I, at that point, had never been to Argentina. I knew about their artistic production and uh, arrived there and met, uh, found a beautiful city, vibrant city, amazing art, amazing food and wine and then in particular fell in love uh, with a couple, and that couple was Marlise and Anibal, who's, although he's in the audience, he is allowed to participate anytime he wishes. And what moved me about their passion was not only the passion that they had for their individual histories, because Marlise is actually from Brazil, and uh, in love with an Argentinian, and together uh, the life that they have built uh, as collectors, but more as patrons and um, lovers of history. And, and last year I returned back to Argentina after four years to, to do a project called U-Turn, which for the fair, which is run by a non-for-profit arts foundation, which I believe is the only one of its kind worldwide. And it was the first international section in the fair. And it was a combination of Berlin galleries and Latin American galleries. And uh, it, it was a tremendous amount of fun to see the reaction of the new, of the community towards a project from the collectors uh, to our colleagues uh, in the commercial side uh, to the curatorial uh, ones. And that's when I had the privilege of meeting Willie because one of the gallerists, uh, Orly mentioned, I said, who is this, y the young generation? What are they doing? I want to meet some of them. And uh, two days later, I got a call from Willie, and he invited us all to his house. And I saw the beautiful works of art and listened to him speak about his country and the works that he had been collecting passionately and about work that he was doing with the university and, and it just made me really um, be hopeful, hopeful about art, hopeful about what art does beyond something that, that creates a sensation inside of us when we look at it. And my colleague Tanya, which I think sh soon we're gonna charge because we're gonna go on the road together and tour, was kind enough to participate again this year. She was with me on the panel when we spoke of Peru last year, a curator at the MoMA, and right now we're seeing images from the Tate Collection um, and works of Argentinian artists in the Tate Collection. She is one of the curators that I find um, spends a lot of the time traveling and, and speaking to the artists and the colleagues in the country as well as outside and, and therefore find her to have a very democratic vision of things, a very realistic vision of things and, and uh, uh, the way she approaches it even though British is very warm and passionate and uh, so I think the genetic has jumped. So that is kind of the parameter of discussion. This is not a conversation that revolves around what they have bought or how much it costs when they bought, but rather what it is that makes the setting in which they became uh, collectors and patrons and lovers of art unique, what made it different to them. And Tanya always uh, 
does an amazing job of being able to, to link it to what is happening institutionally uh, outside of the world, the vision that is being given. This was, uh, these last two years were big for Argentina. In, in terms of um, our colleague, Victoria Nurham was the curator of the Lyon Biennale. Um, uh, our colleague, Diane Ressler, had several exhibitions in Europe and in Latin America of Argentinian uh, art. It was the year that the Argentinian Pavilion at Venice got a lot of attention for a very young artist, Adrián Villarrojas, and other artists, Maki to uh, um, all Basualdo have done very well internationally and continue to thrive. So Argentina is very much being spoken of and we hope that this in some way um, you know, wakes up your desire to come and visit us in Argentina. Uh, the fair is from the 15th to the 22nd of May and we welcome you uh, to, to come during that time or any other time. So with that, I want to first um, Turn to Willie, and um, and 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 just ask uh, how how you're, you're young. You have uh, you work a lot. You have kids. Why the arts? Why why arts? And how did you come to this? And what get you gets you excited? Why arts? Because I made a mistake, I guess. Did you? <laughs> yes, because uh, as I was telling you today, I was living in New York, and um, I was missing Argentina. I was like the, the, the guy from the little town who goes to the big city and never gets adapted, and that was me in New York. So I was missing my country a lot, and I decided to buy a piece of art that was I mean, getting me back to Argentina. It was a Molina Campos. Molina Campos is, or was a painter who was making gauchos. And I love my Molina Campos. It's like the, 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 the base of, of my collection, although today it's not related to what I'm buying nowadays. But uh, at that time, uh, the person who I consider my, my mentor, collecting, who, was Diego, who is Diego Gradosic, told me, Willie, this is very nice, but this is not what you should be buying. I mean, you should look at the artists of your generation. I mean, what are they doing? You should interact with them, trying to influence on them, try to help them to go out to the world. And so I went to Malva one day, following the advice of my, who ended up being my mentor, and I saw a piece of art that I really like very much. And I uh, said, well, Diego was right. So I started to browse this artist on internet, and I fell into a, a web page called Bola de Nieve, which is a, a, it means a snowball. And Bola de Nieve, uh, when you choose an artist, this artist is referred by other artists, mm -hmm. and at the same time, he talks about other artists. So it's like a net of artists interacting. So I don't know, since that day, Bola de Nieve was <laughs> like my word. It was like the Bible. No? And then, what and year was this? Eh? What year was this? Yeah. When was this? Ah, what was this? Uh, the, the artist. You know? When, when ah, was when this? Ah, when was this? Ah, sorry. This was back in, ooh, I would say, 2003. I think. And so I ended up buying my, my first uh, piece of art in, in Bola de Nieve, uh, which was a Marina de Caro, the contemporary art. And since that day, I mean, I couldn't stop. No? And, and, and uh, you were talking about my children. And now when they come to my apartment, they said, Dad, this looks like a museum. No? <laughs> but, uh, but I enjoy a lot, I mean, uh, uh, sharing, I mean, the visits to the museum, arts with them, and, 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 and they, Although they are very young, they have an educated view and they can discuss and they, 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 they really like it. So I mean, it became a, a very important part of my life without knowing it. And, and, and I don't know, that was it. Malisa, how about yourself? How do you come to the arts? Well, first of all, I need to say I'm very shy. <laughs> I don't like to speak in public. I'm very happy to see very friendly friends faces in front of me. Um, I don't feel comfortable to speak about what I do <laughs> and I prefer work. So I just need to explain, I, I start to acquire, I mean, art about 20 years ago. Just because I, I always was curious about the other, 
about the other people explain about their lives, about their environment, and about their lives, in fact. So um, I like art, but I like other things. I like poetry, I like um, you know, cinema. Art is very important in my life, but not just about art. It's about human being. When I buy something, it's because I want to have a relationship uh, through art. And sometimes um, I, I, I need to live with that piece of art because it makes sense, make me think about it. So I, I don't know how to explain, mm -hmm. and um, that's it. It's just uh, about thinking about life. It's very, it's very simple for me. When I've looked at pieces in your collection, they are more historical, and you've always uh, made a point of saying, don't introduce me as a collector of contemporary art. What, the, what does that mean to you, and, and, and how do you define the, the works of art that, that you communicate with. Yeah, it's true. I, I'm, I'm not really into contemporary because it's contemporary. I, we bought art, me and my husband, uh, Anibo before me, and uh, because I think it makes sense with our life, our history. I'm someone which are permanently connected to my country, to my culture, to my new country now, my adopted country, Argentina. So I want to discover why the artists are expressing themselves in that way. And it's not a, a, a matter of time. Uh, we bought a lot of modern art. I'm very interested to, con to understand the process of creation in Argentina, very connected to the political environment. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I like the most in the Argentine art. I always use an expression, it's quite superficial, but I think makes sense in a way, is the, um, when I, I compare the Brazilian creative process and the Argentine process, creative process. I always say the Brazilians create with the gut and the Argentine with the mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Argentine artists, you can always find a sense. And I like that, you know, make me think, that's it. Would you agree, Tanya? How are the how are the artists expressing themselves? Um, I I I find um, looking at what the Tate has in the collection in terms of Argentinian art. Um, this was a very interesting process for me to go and look through the collection and and review and think. Well, what what have we acquired from Argentina? And and think about it in that way because I, from what I've I've discovered by putting this these series of visuals that, that we had on uh, together was that there isn't really a particularly a defining characteristic that there are multiple narratives at work there. I think that perhaps there, there is a little bit of truth in in terms of a kind of intellectualism or a literariness um, and I think that perhaps British culture uh, can find a parallel. Um, in Argentinian art in that respect because we're known also as being a very literary culture uh, rather than a visual one. But um, I think in terms of what the Tate has acquired, we have multiple narratives going on and there isn't necessarily a very um, a sense that we've gone out and, and collected in a particularly nas nationalistic way around finding a coherent narrative or history or overriding um, chronology of what's happened in Argentina, but to pursue different uh, interests and um, lines of research for which Argentinian practitioners have been central. So, for instance, early 20th century photography has come into the collection quite recently. Uh, mid 20th century open kinetic art uh, works by Julio Le Parc have been in the collection for some for some time and more recently we've added work by younger artists like Jorge Mackey who had a very important show in, in Europe this year at, at SMAC in Ghent. Smack, so yeah. I'm not sure that there is something that I can really put my finger on in terms of a singular narrative particularly with Argentinian art but it has been periodically very important for a number of different uh, significant developments within the history of modernism which we are trying to track in a global way now at Tate. So that's really uh, how I've sort of come at it. So this was a very interesting exercise for me to, to think about 
and review uh, what it is that the Tate collection encompasses mm -hmm. um, in this sense. Willie, when you look at some of the younger artists, because I know that you're very involved and it would be nice for you to talk about the Itela program and the Beca Cuitca, uh, when you look at the artists, do, do you see strains, do, do you see a common thread or do you see kind of new languages being explored um, amongst the younger generation right now, trying to separate themselves from, from historically uh, the, the people that have defined in some way um, the Argentinian... Um, they, they always try to, to, to um, start their, their own language, but having said that, I mean, the, the, there are some artists that are very... I mean, you, you can see the influence uh, on, on the new generation, no? I mean, I believe it's, it's time of, uh, it's just uh, about uh, time, and I'll, when they get more mature and, and more grown, and then they, they start to, to have their own style, no? But uh, definitely Guillermo Cuitca is a big influence uh, for them. I mean, uh, as, as you just mentioned, no? the Beca Cuitca is, is very important, I will say that Every single artist, young artist in Argentina, wants to be part of Beca Cuitca. What is the Beca Cuitca? Beca Cuitca is a, it's a, a, a scholarship organized by Guillermo Cuitca and the University de Tela. Mm -hmm. uh, that it, that doesn't take place every year. It's just they open the beca every two, four, five years, depending on on the situation. And uh, it's something that uh, I mean, young artists just they, they they just kill to be part of that. And in Buenos Aires today, I will say that Beca Cuitca is happening at the same time with the program of young artists of the University de Tela, and uh, it's a place of pilgrimage for collectors, artists, curators. It, it's well, it's in a form, it's a residency program, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the artists are tutored by Guillermo Cuitca sí. himself, and they, they go through a period of, I think, two years or so, and, and then they move on. And many, some of them have previous uh, artistic educational training, and some don't. Some come from other educational backgrounds. But that's been kind of a, a place where gallerists have looked to bringing in the the newer generations and um, collectors are looking to support that program and that's something new that has not existed since the 60s. I mean, the, 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 the program of the University, or, I mean, the, the University de Tela or the Instituto, or the, the Tela Institute in the 60s was something central in, in, in the art life of Argentina. I would say even in Latin America, it was really very important. That, with the time, disappeared. Argentina went through very tough political and economical times. And I always say that Argentina is a big farm, and given the uh, prices of the commodities of the last 10 years, really, uh, the situation changed completely. Today, Argentina is a place where people is happy. It's a, a growing country. I mean, the, 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 the rate of growth, of the GDP growth of Argentina for the last eight years has been really one of the highest in the world. And um, all that uh, wealth that's been created in the country, I mean, started to like waterfall and it's reaching these institutes, these universities, the artists, and um, and well, today we have, again, for the last three years, the, the University of Itela working in a, in a, in a an artist, in, in an art program and uh, is becoming again as it was in the 60s a central place as, as I said no to me is seen as a place of pilgrimage for any person related to a, a contemporary art. Malisa how would you complement that given that you work historically? I, uh, yes I, I think about what Tanya just said I'm, I think one characteristic I, I, I really I think it's very important in Argentine process, creative process, is how politics mm -hmm. plays a role. And uh, I think that makes sense with the history of Argentina itself. I mean, uh, Argentina was the first um, uh, Latin American country to have a, a socialist deputy a representative at the Congress in the, um, the end of the 19th century. And so, I mean, politics 
it's, it was always very important, the creative process in Argentina. Mm -hmm. And that's the big difference, I think, between Brazil and Argentina, you see. When I talk about mind and gut, is that we, um, we, we work in a different way. And it still occur in the same way. I mean, young artists in Argentina are very, very touched by the environment, what happens you know, in their country and their community. They are, they, they, they have many, many engagements with the society. And young artists, which are part of this group, uh, Becca Quitica, mm -hmm. they still have the same, um, the same way of create, I think, it's my point of view. That the context is very yeah, the important. The context is very important in Argentina. And um, um, I don't know what to say. I, I, I think a, it's a very interesting country to live. Um, many people have engagements with the society in Argentina, not just the artists. Uh, I feel we spoke a lot about this. I, I think as a, I mean, lucky ones like we are, we have many self obligations with the society we live. Um, we, try, we try all the time with our foundation to create programs, educational programs. Now we just finished to produce a CD with um, uh, ho the whole uh, art history in Argentina to give for free for the high schools. And the response we have in Argentina about art is so huge. Everybody is so interesting what happens in this this matter. I have to say that that for me, having lived in Mexico, which forms my my context of uh, uh, you know cultural context, Argentina was interesting to go to to the Argentinian collectors um, beyond yourselves and the Verges that have a that have a very amazing and uh, tremendous contemporary art collection, and a few others who are more historical, like Jorge Helft, who've done so much. But it was interesting to see the personal relationships that most of the younger collectors have established with the Argentinian artists and how personal that relationship is. And uh, in, a, in, a, in a way, that support, it, it, the, the community just felt so much closer. And also in the collecting habits, I noticed that, for instance, when we did U-Turn, which in a way was a labor of, of love because it's uh, the fair only tries not to lose money. It's not that they make money, we just try not to lose money and to be able to just create a platform for dialogue. It was the fact that people were willing to step out of their boundaries and, and support other artists, but supporting the community of artists, which last year when we were talking about Peru, so many of the mm -hmm. Peruvian artists are abroad, most of the Argentinian artists are actually living in Argentina, which, which is a bit of a different situation. How, how do you, Tania, how, or how are you seeing the way that Argentinian artists that are participating in the international shows, Maki and Ehrlich being more known, of course, but this year many of them were highlighted in the Lyon Biennale. Mm -hmm. how, how is the production being, being viewed? How is the... I think that, um, you know, Argentinian, younger contemporary Argentinian artists are gaining in an international reputation, Maki being one of the, the more prominent ones, right. but increasingly a new generation is coming through. You mentioned Adrian Villa Rojas, uh, who showed at Venice uh, this year, but also um, artists like Irene Koppelman, Irene who is Koppelman. about to have a solo show at Gasworks in London at the beginning of next year, who is an extraordinary um, artist, incredibly complex work, um, and, and one of, I think, a, a, yeah, a, a new generation of artists who are becoming known on an international stage. So there, there is this uh, uh, constant um, contribution from, from Argentinian artists um, in developing new languages of art. And that, that has been true through the history of 20th century modernism. Argentina has been an incredibly important presence within the negotiations of different uh, strands of, of practice within um, Modernist and, and uh, contemporary art, from the from the geometric abstraction of the Mahdi group to the conceptual and political or ideological conceptualism, whether you uh, partake of that 
reading of, of, of conceptual art, but I think actually it is very strong within Argentinian practice um, in the 60s and 70s. Um, and then... Other than that, mm -hmm. other than the 40s too. Yes, yeah. yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then successive generations. So I think it, it is something that is, is continuing to be... Um, you know, Argentinian artists are continuing to, to find a, a voice on an international stage. Um, having said that, I think that's true. I think that there are few uh, based abroad, but, but actually uh, both in, in Buenos Aires, but also in other centers such as Rosario, Cordoba, in Argentina, there are other, there's a kind of multiple centers within Argentina which are important. Yeah. Um, it's true, Mendoza, Salta, we were talking about it, that there are different centers of production mm -hmm. and that artists are very comfortable. It's, it's just not a Buenos Aires dominated scene. But I think there's, you know, there's also something which is being, um, uh, to which Argentinian art historical practices are also and curatorial practices are also contributing and that is this shift of attention from this kind of focus on the geometric abstraction of, of, the, of Latin American art to a, re a revised interest in conceptual practice in the document um, one of the most prominent cases being Tucumán Arde yes. and, um, which has, has found a great visibility on an international stage as well. So there, there, there is a, a, a there are ways in which Argentina is is contributing to um, a kind of ongoing revision of the the main focal points and narratives within contemporary practice uh, and historical practice, so that we begin to focus on successive kind of generations as well. Uh, throughout, uh, for me, one of the things that is important and the reason that you two uh, represent, is, it, it is your support of the community. I remember for a project that was being done in Berlin, I had mentioned an Argentinian artist and Willie immediately said, I, I will help the cost of having that artist of be able to go to Berlin if that means that they're going to be able to showcase their work. W why is that so important to you? I mean, that was immediate. It didn't even take more than two seconds for you to say that. W why is that something that's so important for you? Yeah, because uh, I, I, mean, I, I love Argentina, really. It's, it's, it's a mess. It's disorganized. I mean, we have crisis every 10, 15, 20 years, but it's a great place to live, really. It's a... Um, it's a uh, I know I want uh, people to come to Buenos Aires and see what is going on. I want people to uh, I mean I, I want big designers and and, and, and uh, uh, artists and collectors to come and visit the uh, our fair. I, I want people to we were talking to Abase today and said look but you should not only come to Argentina because of the art fair. I mean you should go also to Mendoza and have the great wines we have, or go to Salta to the north to see the, the museums, the, the Hess Museum, which is fantastic, or the Incas Museums that we have there. So if we reject this type of project, so we, don't, we do not uh, contribute for those things to happen, I mean, really, we, we are uh, diminishing interest for Buenos Aires. No? So that's why I believe it's important. It's important to give back to, to society what we got. As Mardice said, we, we are the lucky ones in, in Argentina because it's a country with very big differences. So I believe it, that is something that is changing. My generation is more open to do these type of things. Uh, and I know that we said that we were not going to talk about us, but a, a, a big motivation for me were Mardice and Aníbal. I mean, would, I mean, they made an incredible show in Brazil, inviting young local artists, so it's important. I mean, that type of things motivate other people to do more, so. I would agree. But Claud Claudio, I do have a question because we started off time, how much time we do have. Okay, so I'm going to open it to the public so that maybe because we do have we have Orly here, we have Anibal. If there are people that would like to make some comments um, about what is happening in Argentina and to, to, um, to encourage you to really come and, and 
visit this very vibrant community, very open community that has more than art. It does have wine and great food, but, but more this energy. I think this really exciting energy, intellectual often. Uh, there are times that I've felt that I couldn't utter a word in, in Jorge Gelf's house, uh, you know, until I went back to school and educated myself a little more. So there, there, there is, there is an intellectual burden that I think that, that exists in, in Argentina, but there's all the, the, also this tremendous energy. So I would like to open it up and ha see if you have any questions or comments. Aníbal. Orly. <laughs> Do we have historic comments, Arlie? We don't. Do we have any historic comments? No? I love it. When did you all become so shy? <laughs> I have to tell you all, uh, for me, doing this project in, in Argentina and going back to Buenos Aires, um, goes back to this kind of doing something intellectually rather than with your gut. Uh, I, and it's also something about knowing your, your people. I always believe that that's kind of the biggest success is when you recognize the idiosyncrasies of your own people. Uh, obviously, a group of people recognize early on that doing maybe a biennial or doing a exhibition of some kind was not going to bring in the support for it to happen on a regular basis, but that maybe a fair would be able to do that. And w what the fair has been, where the fair is going, that, that's a conversation for other people. But the fact that this fair, I have never seen lines of 50,000 people. Over 150,000 people go in uh, to see the fair. The fair has become this kind of educational institution. During the year, there's these talks. And I have to say that the interaction that it caused, and the, the, out of the 18 artists that were in my section, um, eight of them were present and they interacted they traveled the country uh they 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 came i i asked them to come for four days they ended up being there for two weeks uh they disappeared most of the time they really explored argentina some of them did the work there their work completely transformed when they were in buenos aires completely took on a new layer and and to me that was brilliance of recognizing a difference and approaching something and not wanting to kind of impose the structure maybe from abroad that works for a different community and saying that we have to accept it but something that maybe is easier to doesn't feel as intimidating and and I think that that somehow has also fomented this this support and this love uh, for, for art as being part of part of your experience. There is something very nice going on nowadays also. There is a young collector called Alejandro Ikonikov uh -huh. and he started a program for new collectors. No? And so when you are starting to buy art and you are scared of what you are buying is correct or not, I mean, he invites collectors who speaks to the new collectors and you see that all make the same mistakes, that they are buying more or less what uh, you are buying or that you are not that far from what they are doing. No? And this is encouraging new people to come. He started making uh, seminars in Buenos Aires. This year he made the third seminar. And now he's starting to do seminars in the provinces. And the, 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 the circle of collectors is growing in a way which is, uh, I mean, for, to me it's impressive. And it's something. So also we are getting more support from locals who are getting involved in, in to collect. Well, I, 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 I do have to say that I'm, I'm very grateful to people in particular, like to Orly, who gave me the list of those youngins, and I went and I knocked on everyone's door. But I think that in particular, you two that were my inspiration for Argentina must feel proud that this is happening in a way, because, because you are doing this work on a very regular basis, and now the community is really growing. Yeah, not just us, many, many I think more and more people are engaged to do something to help artists and their community. Um, I, I, I think, I really think going to Argentina is a good experience because it's a unique country. As a Brazilian, it's quite hard to say that, you know, but Argentina is an amazing country with, a, I mean, very generous people and you can feel that also in art. 
I mean, the artists self, they are open to, to receive another artist, um, creators, and, uh, and how people are curious about art. I think very few countries in the world can have, um, I mean, a meeting. I, we, I can invite Tanya, and you have a amount, a huge amount of people. I mean, come on people mm -hmm. coming just to listen to you. you it's know? very true. So that's very, very particular in Argentina. I would agree, and uh, I would say that uh, that if there's one line that does crystallize that there's others, Adam Lerner, my colleague, the director at the MCA was also there. I think we would all agree that that it is a country that is very welcoming and that the response that you get, the support you get to be able to do the work um, is, is rewarding. So we invite you to come uh, to Argentina fair time or not and that everybody will be there to, to receive you but the Artists are very well represented in this fair and other fairs around the city. Uh, there is no shortage and we have excellent galleries uh, that are exhibiting at Art Basel. And uh, we really encourage you to uh, go and take a look and, and then visit us in Buenos Aires, Salta, Mendoza, Cordoba and the rest. Thank you so much for coming on a Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm.